Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous. That's the 2025 Chevy Trax, but more specifically, it's an active, which is the highest trim level or tied for being the highest trim level. And it's in the color that Chevy likes to call Marina Blue, which let me tell you in person, in rain, snow, shine, overcast, any of those conditions, this is probably one of the best colors ever produced, especially for an economy car, an affordable car that starts around $20,000 and tops out in the upper mid 20s. So today I'm going to share the good, the bad and the ugly of the 2025 Chevy Trax to help you guys decide at home if this might be the right vehicle for you. So you can expect to see a walk around all the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 on GPS, and then my final thoughts and huge thanks to Twin Falls Chevy for letting me borrow theirs for the day. I'm gonna link this one below if you're interested. They ship all over the country and they sell below MSRP. And with that said, let's dive right into this review. And if you guys like Chevy, the color Marina Blue Metallic or my video, please consider liking my video. That smock, the kindness, I really appreciate it. It goes a long way in helping me know what you guys wanna watch more of, but it'll also help you by having the YouTube choose to show you more stuff like this. Thank you guys. But if you were previously unfamiliar with the Chevy Trax or you haven't seen any of my other reviews for 2025, you should know that this is technically a compact crossover. So it's just a tiny little SUV, but it actually offers a pretty big punch at that. This is shared on the same platform as the Buick and Vista, if you guys have seen any of those. Or in China, where these are also sold, it's the Chevrolet Seeker. So it does have a few siblings around the world. This one specifically, the VIN number starts with a K. So this one was built in South Korea, but some of them also, especially for the Chinese market, are assembled in China. So none of these are actually assembled in the good old US of A, where these were presumably designed. But overall, they're pretty unique. Like I said, a base model starts at around $20,000. But you have to keep perspective. That's before any options and goodies that you might want. That's also before delivery and destination. So the cheapest one of these you realistically will get maybe is about twenty-two dollars or $23,000. This one more specifically starts around $26,000. So after any options and after destination, it's about a $27,000 price tag. But that doesn't really deter a lot of people from loving their Chevy Trax. This first came out back in 2013 for the first generation. And this honestly doesn't look anything like those very beginnings of the Chevy Trax because those were kind of strange looking, very bubbly in personality. This one, it's longer, it's wider, it looks much more aggressive, and it seems to be selling better because of all those reasons. These top out sometimes over 100,000 units a year in North America alone because overall for 20 something thousand dollars, you just don't have a lot of competition at that price point. And this seems to be a pretty good vehicle. And something that I find fascinating about the Chevy Trax and how Chevy decided to market these, at least in North America, is whether you go with the lower trim level like an LT or one RS, or you do decide to go the top tier with the two RS or an active like this, the price difference is only about $5,000. So that's pretty subtle. That's not really a lot. And in a second, I'm going to show you what you get for the difference in price. But think about something like a Toyota Tacoma or a base SR, 30 grand. A TRD Pro, 60 grand, that's a huge price discrepancy. Or what about the extinct Dodge Challenger, a base model, again, about $30,000, but a loaded out Hellcat, Jailbreak, Red Eye, Demon, whatever the numbers and the words you wanna say, those sometimes were three or four times the expense of the base model. These, whether you get the base model or a top tier loaded one, it's really gonna look pretty remarkable either way. A lot of those subtle changes are on the interior, but a few that you will notice out here is it does have black caps. It does have black 18 inch wheels. It has the lowered roof rails with a sunroof. So from the outside beyond the marina blue metallic paint, it just looks like a really sporty, really nice place to be, but also has a heated steering wheel. It has heated seats and they're kind of like this StarTech synthetic material that ages really well and they're pretty comfortable. And then it has a lot of infotainment with the big screens, even though they don't have a ton of features in them, they are still big, they look good, and you, you have a lot of the Chevy Safety Sense features as well. And overall, this Chevy Trax easily fits in the standard parking spot with several feet all around it to spare. Overall, it's about 15 feet long, but it does have a nine foot wheelbase, so it does feel surprisingly planted on the road. It's roughly six feet wide and about five feet tall. It weighs only 3,000 pounds, which kind of just adds the economical and kind of fun driving feel that this offers. And then it has a payload capacity that's actually pretty impressive at 943 pounds. So between the roof rails, the cargo, and the passengers, you can carry 943 pounds worth of people and stuff. It can tow, if you really must, up to about 1,263 pounds. It has just over seven inches of ground clearance, a 350 final drive ratio, 
and it can do a full circle in about 35 feet, which is very convenient around town. The last few things to mention here is the gas door is located on the driver's side where it belongs, but even when you lock the vehicle, the gas door doesn't lock, which is unfortunate. So some of the bums might attempt to siphon your fuel, but it's a 14 gallon tank. This thing is rated for about 28 city, about 32 highway. So your max road trip and range is about 448 miles if you're really conservative. And then it has a Goodyear Assurance wheel. It only has about 830 seconds or a quarter inch of tread depth. So that probably would last a vehicle of this weight, maybe 40,000 miles, but I don't think that's as much tread as you would get on a factory Goodyear Assurance tire, but I could be wrong. It is a 225, 55, 18, and that black wheel seriously looks so good, but there's only a temporary spare in the back, not a full size. And then this is your key again. So you have unlock, you have lock, you have remote start from the remote, which is really cool. And then the panic button, of course, but seriously, just leave that thing in your pocket because you do have proximity key features. And on Chevys, it looks and actually works pretty quick, a lot faster than the other manufacturers. So I like that feature a lot. The driver's side door panel is basically just a lot of black materials. I think the plastics will age well. The door card is kind of nice, has a little bit of stitching in it. Soft, but you know, durable materials, pocket, snacks, bottle, speaker. The speakers sound okay on this. You do have kind of an interesting design texture right there. But overall, there's nothing really on the door sill. This one does not have all weather mats. You have rubberized pedals, a dead pedal that's not rubberized. You have what looks like probably a fuse box right there. You have the hood release, you have the lighting ventilation, kind of like the Camaro style, other than it doesn't turn like a Camaro. And then more lighting stock right there. Otherwise, this is the heated water repellent type of seat with some power features, active stamped in the headrest and the sunroof up top. And then sitting inside the tracks is a really nice place to be. You have a speaker in the A pillar, you have basically a pretty good height dashboard and layout so that your visibility is not bad and you can see out of this pretty well without feeling too claustrophobic. It is a heated leather wrapped wheel. The horn, very high pitched. <laughs> but overall, you know, when we fired up with the push button start, roars to life. The 1.2 liter turbo just, it doesn't make a lot of noise. The AC is cold, ventilation is basically everywhere in this vehicle. And yeah, you have cruise control settings on the left, adaptive cruise, voice and volume on the right. You can kind of go through some of the info display, but there's not really a lot on this one. The screens look fancy, but the software is not extremely advanced, like a Tesla or something like that. And then you can go through here, turn off traction control. It's honestly so silly that traction control has its own software button in here. It should have just been a physical button. There's room for it around here somewhere. And then you have ventilation. I do like that it's physical buttons, although the blank buttons remind you that even on the highest trim level, what could you possibly be missing? Otherwise, maybe just redesign that Chevy. And then you have a plug-in, some more plug-ins, some storage down here. You have a backup camera that actually is really nice. I like Chevy backup cameras on their modern system. You have electronic parking brakes and cup holders. You have more storage right there and more storage right here, but I don't see any plug-ins in there, unfortunately. And then you have the controls for the power moonroof to tilt and to slide. And does this slide? Probably doesn't, and it doesn't have an extension piece either. And there's no light, so you can see where Chevy has to save some money, but let's hop in the back and see how we fit behind ourselves. The back door panel basically follows the same theme as the front, but you don't have the nicer door card. You just have more plastic material back there and a small pocket down here. Otherwise, the 60-40 split bench, that actually looks really nice. You can see just like the front, there's really not a lot of bolstering, but it's uh, it's fairly thin. It's actually a little bit heavier than I was expecting for that. Maybe that's from the materials. But overall, being someone who's 5 foot 11, having the driver's seat in a pretty average position, you actually have a whole lot of room back here, but you have no mat pocket behind the seat. So this person doesn't get to be a backseat driver. There's also no vents, but I actually decided to leave the car on so I can kind of feel it, at least on my hand level. And there's nothing to lay down here for an armrest. But overall, the windows are lower. My head actually does want to touch the ceiling, at least my spiky hair today. That little window right there is kind of silly, but sure, we'll take more natural light if we can get it. And overall, it's okay. It's what you pay for. Let's hop out and I'll show you the hatch. Marina Blue looks really good on the back of the Chevy Trax. But it doesn't have a power lift gate, which honestly, in a lot of cases, I like. It's one fewer thing to break or go wrong. And then because this vehicle is about five inches wider and 11 inches longer than the first generation, you have six more cubic feet of room back here. So this has over 25 cubic feet, more than a Subaru Crosstrek, more than a Mazda CX-30. It even has this tiny little incandescent light, but not a lot else to talk about back here. You only have a temporary spare tire down here, but enough storage, you can see the height difference. They could hide some more goodies down here. So comment below, what goodies are you guys gonna hide under here? 
Otherwise, the privacy shade, you can unloop it and tuck that away if you want. But overall, it's pretty nice. And when you drop all the seats, you have about 54 cubic feet of room, which isn't too bad. And if you get a ride shotgun in the Chevy Trax Active, let's find out together what you get. Basically the same exact door panel, even down to the textured material right here, but no extra controls as you'd expect that to only be on the driver's side. And then it's just a manual seat, but it is heated still. The backpack doesn't seem to mind because the backpack's not alive anymore. And today we have another set of cloth mats, no storage on the side or above the glove box, although you do have this kind of really 3D design in the dashboard. Interesting, it's even like a magnetic ray. So that's kind of fun. It might even be cool if they color match that to the rear, but or to the exterior color, but they don't. Otherwise, you have a pretty decent sized glove box, but no plugins or 12 volts or anything in there. So with that said, let's come around to the front. I'll show you what the 1.2 liter little three cylinder turbo engine looks like. And this is where the magic happens. It's 137 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 162 foot pound feet of torque at about 6,200 RPM. You'll notice there's a lot of gap before you actually get to the engine. So a lot of structural, hopefully safety features built in, the radiator, the fan, all that type of stuff. You have the computer, you have some reservoirs, more reservoirs, battery, fuse box, induction disappears in the back for the turbocharger right there, just a little one. And then it comes into the induction side for the three little intake runners of that turbocharged engine. Just look at how cute it is. Look at how little it is. But there's actually a decent amount of room to work on here under the hood if you ever had to work on it. So I'd imagine it's actually not that bad. The main thing is it's a transversely mounted engine. So it's a front wheel drive platform with a six speed transmission in the back. Hopefully it's pretty reliable. You can see the engine mount right there. So you usually have to take those off when you do the serpentine belt, unless the belt, actually it might run completely underneath on that. So that might be a cool design. But you guys let me know in the comments when you start to work on these. And with that said, let's drop the hood and take it for a drive. Initial driving impressions of the 2025 Trax Active. Let's give it some gas. This powertrain combo, the 1.2 liter turbo with the six speed is really interesting because sometimes it shifts really quickly, especially between first and second gear. And then sometimes it feels a little bit slower, kind of like an older school six speed automatic. But overall, this is just such a cool vehicle to be driving. First of all, the AC blows really cold. The heated steering wheel, it's warm, but it's not hot. That could be a little bit warmer, but that's also just my perspective and, and you know what I personally would like to see. I think for a lot of people, it's gonna be warm. The seats are actually pretty warm. They're not hot like Mazda seats where they actually can burn you and you turn them down. But I think these are really nice, really comfortable. But the seats don't really have any bolstering, so you do kind of slide around. So be careful that you don't take a corner too fast. I guess that just kind of adds to the entertainment of driving this little Chevy Trax that only weighs around 3,000 pounds. But overall, visibility is pretty good, although I don't feel like it's really any better than a midsize or compact sedan. Let's see how well it corners. Give it some gas. I do have traction control off right now, so... Yeah, it puts the power down pretty well. The 11 inch display or screen in the center of the vehicle on the dash is nice. And the digital display here is nice too. It really doesn't show you a whole lot more than what, you know, a physical gauge would just show you for fuel and temperature, but it still is cool. It kind of looks nice other than it can get a little bit glary because this vehicle, especially when you have the sunroof, you know, unshaded, it does get a lot of light in here. It looks really nice. Personally, I'd probably recommend tinting the windows, but the AC, at least on, I guess it's only 65 degrees outside right now with the vehicles registering. So I don't know how the AC would feel on like a hundred degree day, but right now it feels really nice, but tinted windows are gonna help it feel even cooler, especially for the backseat occupants without having ventilation back there. Overall though, I really like this. I just love that you can see the marina blue on basically the whole hood from the driving position. There's a little bit of a bump right here. Let's see how the suspension handles. Yep, that's definitely not as smooth as a Subaru or something else like that. That's a little bit more prepared in the suspension department. But for being a front wheel drive bias, or I guess it's only front wheel drive, it's not all wheel drive as an option on these. This basically just feels like the modern version of the 1.4 liter Chevy Cruze sedan from a decade earlier. 
and I think Chevy did a really good job designing this. For $27,000, it's not cheap, especially when you're getting only a 1.2 liter engine, but with all the creature comforts, all the amenities that this one has in today's market, that's honestly not a bad deal. That's the average used car price or used car transaction, and I think you're getting a lot of stuff, especially in the styling and the comfort department of this. Hopefully it holds up well. I guess that will be seen in a couple years from now, but let's get to the private road and do a zero to 60. Zero to 60 in the Chevy Trax. Traction control is off. Density altitude puts us at a mile above sea level. So this turbocharged engine is down on power, probably about 10%. Do a little bit of a brake rev. Let's see what it can do. A little bit of wheel spin. First gear was pretty quick at shifting and then second gear definitely felt a little bit slower. But true zero to 60 today came in at 9.83 seconds or a little bit faster with our rollout. Let's get to my final thoughts. My final thoughts of the Chevy Trax Active is I seriously think this is such a cool vehicle. It looks beautiful. It looks aggressive. It's even a little bit punchy in first gear and getting 30 MPG. I do expect better numbers than that, but the engine does have to work pretty hard because it is only three cylinders after all. But the decision is, do you buy one of these or do you consider the competition? I always recommend you drive all the other vehicles like the Toyota CHR, the HRV from Honda, the Subaru Crosstrek, the Mazda CX-30. Drive all the other vehicles that can be had at under $30,000 and might be a compact crossover comparison to this. And then the other debate is, this is the average used car price at about $27,000. So do you buy a brand new warrantied one of these, which you're gonna feel special in, it's probably gonna be a really good vehicle for a long time. Or do you buy something like a used Toyota, a used Lexus, something else that feels luxurious but has already lost a lot of the value? I don't know how these are gonna hold up for their price point. I don't know how reliable they are gonna be with that three cylinder engine once it's out of warranty. But for 60,000 miles or so, I think you're gonna feel really special driving this. Honestly, I love low weight cars as long as they are safe. This does have a lot of safety features but I couldn't find the safety rating from the crash test results online and my 30 seconds of research on that configuration or that feature today. So hopefully they do well. A lot of features built in. There's a lot of reasons to like this. Lightweight cars are fun to drive, so go get out there, drive one for yourself. And if you guys got anything out of this video, please consider liking this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Subscribe if you haven't already and share your Chevy Trax experiences because there's hundreds of thousands of these in the US alone and they're also sold in a few other global markets. So I wanna hear from you guys. Take care.